Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for Tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop, Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, Photoshop Elements, and Photoshop Touch. In this video, I'll be formatting some text using kerning and tracking to get the text exactly how I want it to look. So let's jump into Photoshop and see how it's done. In this video, I'll only be working on the words variety show, but the techniques that I use here are used throughout the poster. So I'll show it once and all it is is just a lot of duplication really. So let's turn off the finished article and turn on the words variety show as they first appear to me. Now I've got some problems with this. First of all, it looks quite bland on this piece of paper. We'll deal with that in a little while. We also want to curve it, of course, Again, we'll deal with that in a little while. But first of all, I want to format this text so it looks correct. This really doesn't look correct. But this is how the font wants to display these words. You can see that I've got too much of a gap between the O and the W. I've got too little a gap between the E and the T. And I've certainly got too much of a gap between the V and the A. This is quite a common problem. Most fonts come with a table that tells Photoshop how it should display the different letters when they're next to each other. Unfortunately, in this particular one, it slipped a little bit, but I can always put that right. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to make a duplication of this layer just so we can have a look, see how we're doing in a little while. And let's turn off the original. Now I'm going to bring up the character palette. So window and character. I've actually got mine docked here. So the two that I'm looking for are just here. This is the kerning and this one, which is the tracking. Let me first of all show you the tracking. I'm going to double click on my text there and then click on this icon and then I can scrubby slider it, moving the mouse left and right. And you can see how I can squish all the letters together or I can bring them up. But even when I squish them together, there's still too much of a gap between some of the letters and some of them are too squished. So I'm going to put that back. It's handy, it's nice to know it's there, but we won't really be using it here. The one I will be using is this one, the kerning. Now, I want really to deal with the letters individually, and that's okay, but let's first of all give Photoshop the chance to sort things out for me. So you'll notice that there's a downward facing arrow. If I click on that, at the moment we're on metrics. If I change it to optical, Photoshop does its best to try and sort that out for me. And it doesn't do too bad a job. I'd still like to squeeze the first two letters together and maybe take this E and the T further apart, but really it's done a very good job. Let me turn off the rest of the text here and then I can display both lots of text. So if I bring down the bottom one, that's my original. And then this is the optical. So you can see it's done quite a good job of squeezing them together, but not so much that they're unreadable. Let's make another copy of the original here and I'm going to move that one up a little bit. Now this time I want to take absolute control and this is very easy indeed. So if I go up to my last one, there it is. There we go. So this is untouched so far. I double click it and then I'm going to click inside the text. Now from here between this V and the A, I can click on my downward facing arrow. And once again, I can choose from the drop down arrow what I want to do. So let's try minus 50, not working terribly well. Let's try minus 100, still not enough. I really want this A to be tucked underneath, but that's okay. We can go even further. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut and this is alt on the PC, which is option on a Mac and then the left and right arrows. So in my case here, I want to press alt or option and the left arrow to nudge them together. I'm going to then use the right arrow just to unnudge them really. I went a little bit too far. Then I can release my Alt or Option key and use the arrow key to move along. This one I want a little bit more of a gap, so I'm going to press Alt again, Option on the Mac, and the right key just a couple of times. And that looks a bit better. And then I'm going to go over here to where the O and the W are and Alt and left arrow, and sure enough, I've tucked them all up nicely together, but I've done it individually. Absolute control. Good. I'm going to click on my move tool here, just so as I can scooch this one down so we can compare. Now this time they're very similar 
to the way that Photoshop did it. It certainly takes up about the same amount of space and I would say a bit more visually appealing. Let's turn off those two and then we have this one left. Now I'm going to move this into place so I'm going to put everything back on again and move it up. Okay let's bring down the effects here and you can see that I've added an uh, inner shadow and a gradient overlay but before I do that I'm going to go and click on normal here which is the blending mode I'm going to change that to overlay so it starts blending in with the background. Now I should tell you that the background itself comes from photolia.com a great stock image website there should be details coming up on the bottom of the screen. Okay so now I'm in overlay mode let me double click well, let's per turn them on first, shall we? And then we can double click on the effects and see what's going on. So all I've added is an inner shadow and a gradient overlay. Let's turn off the gradient and go and look at the inner shadow first of all. And it's very, very slight, just five pixels in distance. The size 17 pixels, if I just turn this on and off, you can see it's just to give it a bit of definition around the outside without using stroke, which is a bit harsh for this. The gradient overlay, well, that's slightly different. I've changed this a bit. Let's put this into normal and then bring it up. So you can see I've changed the angle to 90 degrees. I've moved it into multiply, but then reduce the opacity down to about 30%. And then it blends it in nicely. And that's all there was to it. Very similar in all the rest of the text, maybe a different blend mode here and there, but virtually the same all the way through. I click OK and that's that sorted. Now all I need to do now is to bend it over. Let me just do a bit of housekeeping here and close this down to keep it all nice and neat. This is very easy to do the bend. Control T to enter the free transform mode. And then up at the top here we've got this icon which when the little tool tip comes up switch between free transform and warp modes. We want to transform we want to go from transform into warp mode, excuse me. And then over to the left hand side it says none and first one down is an arc and there it is way too much way 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 too much but I've got a little handle here now I can bring this one down to where I want it to be or I can change the amount of the bend in this by using the scrubby slider here so I click and I drag and I can drag it up as much as I like that's maybe a bit too much I can get hold of the handle again bring that down I can go the other way of course this is the way I prefer to do it. It's a bit more tactile. I feel like I'm a bit more in control and then I can go exactly where I want it to be really. There we go. Then I can grab hold of some of this down the left hand side here, grab hold of it and move it into place and click the tick. And there we are, as simple as that. So there we are. We formatted our text using the kerning and the tracking in the character palette. And we've added a few effects as well, just to blend it into our poster. I'm Eric Renner. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us at tipsquirrel.com for a whole host of different tips and techniques in all your favorite Photoshop products. Bye-bye for now.